there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Ghostly Legends of the Old West, Part 2. Let's investigate. In 1850, Texas Rangers Creed Taylor and Bigfoot Wallace rode into an outlaw camp and dispatched some bothersome rustlers led by a desperado named Vidal. They wanted to set an example that would deter future bandits, so they beheaded Vidal, lashed him firmly into a saddle on the back of a Mustang with his noggin swinging wildly from a strap, and set the beast loose. I ain't got nobody, nobody cares for me. As time went on, cowboys spotted the horse with its headless rider and used it for target practice. Each time, incidentally, the beast escaped. Eventually, it was turned into the legend of El Muerto. Even after some folks found the horse and freed it of its grisly cargo, folks saw the apparition of the headless horseman. El Muerto is still seen today, and it is apparent that his unfortunate end never allowed him to get ahead in life. The White Lady of Vallecito is the ghost of a young traveler named Eileen O'Connor who became gravely ill on her stage ride to Sacramento. She was taken to a bed in the back of the Butterfield Stagecoach Station in Vallecito, where she died two days later. It appears she was getting married to a miner in the gold fields upon her arrival. The station master buried her on the property in the wedding dress found among her belongings. People have seen her pacing restlessly about the old station site since the mid-19th century, waiting for the stage to take her to Sacramento. Eileen even tried to hop an Uber, but without a reliable internet source, it never worked out. Okay, that last part is a lie. Sorry. On the Platte River in Wyoming, a phantom ship comes out of the fog to alert the onlooker of the impending death of a friend or family member. Called simply the Death Ship, it is said that upon viewing it, the ghostly, frost-covered crew who are standing around a corpse under a tarp step back and reveal the deceased cargo. In all the cases, the person reported to be seen on the Death Ship died the same day. I'm getting better! No, you're not. You'll be stone dead in a moment. I don't want to go! Now, here in Tucson, the ghost of stagecoach robber William Whitney Brazelton was said to haunt the area near Sentinel Peak, where he was ventilated by Sheriff Chevelle and his posse in 1878. I say was because, well, he followed me home when I investigated in 2016 and hasn't left yet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Austin Buchanan in A Cry of the Night. No. A Cry in the Night. A cry in, the cry in the Night. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing in this movie there, Austin. Um, <clears throat> I'm playing the role of William. It is the second love interest of our main protagonist. Antagonist. I don't know. The killer. The, the one killer. who kills her kids. <laughs> hey, yeah. Oh, did I ruin it for everybody? I have no idea. Damn it. I don't know what's spoiled and what's not. Okay. So you're a goat, right? Means it. You're a goat? What do you do for a living? Hello, Glenn. Hey, how are you? Better than Frogger. That's good. <laughs> you look like a barkeeper. Yeah. You look like a really clean bandit. Clean? Oh yeah, so I'm sorry, I'm in there. They're flawing my character. <laughs> Climb aboard for the ride of your life. Yeah, I got a microphone, it's cool. <laughs> As I close the busy month of October, I want to extend a thank you to all the subscribers who have been so supportive and the talented actors who have been so accommodating. Remember, if it wasn't for all of you, none of this would have been necessary. Well, folks, thanks for watching another episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail.